Big pharmaceutical companies have an all-inclusive strategy, one that allows them to target doctors and physicians directly, and it involves whining and dining those physicians and their office staff in order to get them to push certain medications. But did you know that pharmaceutical companies have greatly impacted even how your doctor prescribes medicine? I have sat in on, uh, they're called informational sessions, where pharmaceutical reps will come into the office and they will provide lunch for the entire office to spend five minutes with a physician. Devin Beasley spent years as a registered nurse, and when it comes to pharmaceutical reps, she has seen it all. It's interesting because they're sitting there talking to you about the most recent technology and current science that's come out on a particular medication. But when the physicians and the pharmaceutical reps are talking background, you find out that these pharmaceutical reps are really sales reps. And their background is, has nothing to do with the medical experience or it has nothing to do with pharmaceuticals. Well, Beasley says it's not every doctor who's involved, but for many physicians, pharmaceutical companies have lots of ways to shower offices with gifts. You'll be taken out, the doctor will be taken out with their staff to a the nicest restaurant in town, and you will spend the evening drinking and eating delightful food, and you will listen to a wonderful uh, educational session about a uh, medication that just came out. Some of the offices that I would apply for would actually tell me, hey, we have catered lunches three times a week. That's directly from pharmaceuticals. Um, you also get materials for your office to make your office look really great. You get models from the different pharmaceutical companies. If a drug is uh, targeting the heart, they will bring in heart models. They will bring in supplies that make your office look like you have a lot of money. But beyond free educational supplies, there is something else that pharmaceutical reps provide to doctors. Free samples or coupons for prescribed medications. And that is important because so many patients have become used to looking for those free samples. It looks really great to the patients if they have free samples, if they have coupons. On top of that, the patients are already, already educated through television commercials, through ads and magazines. They've already been told about what medications are best. Ask your doctor for a coupon, ask your doctor for a sample. So I've seen doctors who have the best intentions prescribing what they think is the best medication if they don't have samples or a coupon to go with it, no one even knows what insurance will cover. Uh, some medications are covered completely, some are not. Patients don't even ask that. Sometimes the patients will just ask, hey, do you have a sample? Do you have a coupon? It's not best practice. No one is asking which is the safest medication, which is the best for me, uh, which is best for the patient. It's all about, do you have samples? Do you have coupons? Can you prescribe me something that does have a coupon? Can you prescribe me something that does have a sample? It has nothing to do with which one is actually best, most effective, or safest. And that's something Republican Senator Chuck Grassley once exposed. Grassley is pushing for legislation. It would require that doctors disclose payments made to them by pharmaceutical companies. The senator sent Truth and Media this statement about the bill that he is pushing called the Sunshine Act. The purpose of the Sunshine Act was to disclose drug and medical device company payments to doctors for public discussion. As data is released, investigative reporters and analysts are able to study the information and look for trends that patients, doctors, and policymakers might want to know. Well, what we also might want to know, how Big Pharma has affected something known as best practices used by nearly all physicians. Here's how it works. Best practices are essentially protocols put in place for the doctors by regulatory agencies and institutions. It's what's expected of the doctor to prescribe. In theory, this is a practice that is agreed upon collectively by doctors and regulatory agencies like the FDA. But the biggest problem here with best practices is how it's manipulated by Big Pharma. The researchers and the scientists who are doing the research that best practices are based on are funded by Big Pharma. To get grant money to do research is very expensive. And guess what? Pharmaceutical companies, they pay educational institutions and private institutions to do the research for them. If you want to continue to get grant money, you want to continue to get money for your research, you're going to give the people that are providing you that financial backing, you're gonna skew your, your results to what they're looking for. And it's sad when pharmaceutical industries have their, their involved in the research, 
they have relationships with the regulatory agencies, and then they also heavily influence the education that the physicians are getting. It's, and they're priming the market for the patients. So they are directly involved in every part of the medical industry and are benefiting from it. So what you need to know is that when it comes to the doctor-patient relationship, it's one that should be protected above all else, certainly. And yet when pharmaceutical companies have the ability to not only influence doctors and what they prescribe, but are also able to create a best practice system that is funded, researched, educated, and developed through pharmaceutical companies, that should give pause to anyone who believes that these are truly best practices. The question becomes, best for whom?